Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, also known as ETCG1 on this here channel. How the heck are you? This is one of my first videos of 2013. Been a little bit since I've been in the shop. Sort of getting reacquainted with stuff, haven't been here a little bit. I've been doing some thinking, as I often do and often talk about here on ETCG1. This time it's about telematics. And telematics, for lack of a better explanation, are electronics that are incorporated into your vehicle that are outside of the normal functions of the vehicle. Let's say like your internet or your navigation system, things like that. And I know some of you might say that the navigation system is a part of the automotive system, and I would say yes and no. What I'm more interested in is the trend that seems to be happening and has been happening for years now. Um, I got out of the dealership about 2007, 2008, and at that time, there were quite a few things that were being incorporated into new vehicles. Uh, namely things like uh, OnStar systems, and those have been around for some time. Navigation systems also have been around for some time, but the evolution of those navigation systems has come quite far, uh, at least in my tenure as far as that was concerned, but also since then it has it is grown by leaps and bounds. Also Bluetooth technology, connecting your cell phone to your, to your car so that you, know, you can more safely operate your cell phone while you're driving down the road. Hands-free operation, uh, running those telephone calls through microphones in the stereo system in the vehicle is a much safer, safer way to have a conversation than it is holding a phone up to your ear, that kind of thing. Vehicle manufacturers have been addressing these things. They've been looking at what their market wants and adjusting their production according to that because obviously they want to make a product that you want to buy. So people that buy new cars um, are looking for gadgets, things to go along with just your general transportation to get you from point A to point B. Now, the trend has been, you know, like I said, it's been moving farther and farther along. And something that, that I predicted, and I'm gonna say again here, is that I predict a time in the not too distant future where you'll be driving down the road, perhaps with your navigation system on, and as you're passing different exits, different places along the highway or different places as you're driving along through a city, uh, things may come up on your, on your satellite navigation that say, uh, Joe's restaurant just around the corner, best crab cakes in town, that kind of thing. And it's sort of like replacing the whole billboard thing. And this may even happen with your cell phones, but I want to keep this to your vehicles in, in this particular video and, and how it pertains to the automotive world. If you have a business, you can start to advertise on a navigational system. And maybe you can, maybe this is a system that you could turn on and off in the vehicle to where you could say, yes, tell me about the, you know, the, the deals or the, the things that are going on as I'm driving by. But more importantly, like say for instance, your maintenance comes up and you hit a certain mileage and your vehicle knows it's due for a maintenance. Well, it tells you, it might even send you an email. They may, I believe they already have this kind of thing, technology that's out there. It says, hey, I'm due for a maintenance, take me to the dealer. The way all this comes together in this video and what I'd like to discuss here is how telematics will affect the aftermarket repair industry. These systems are proprietary. The, the manufacturer makes them to work with their vehicles and there's no reason for them to make it so that an aftermarket uh, repair shop can come in and do anything with that system. Traditionally, the trend has always been to buy a vehicle uh, and have it serviced pretty much at the dealer, and this is just generalization, having it serviced pretty much at the dealership until it gets out of warranty. Once it's out of warranty, you start visiting your independent shops, that kind of thing, or you buy a new vehicle. This has been the, the life cycle that, that manufacturers have tried to cultivate in order to keep you buying their products and also keep you coming back for their service. With telematics, well, let me back up a little bit. Now, back in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, what began to happen with computer controlled emission systems is it was a wild west. Everybody had their own proprietary system uh, and you, you treated all of them differently. So the scan tools that you would buy from those times, and they were, they were few and far between because it was a relatively new technology, Anything that you would get for those things would be, would have a ton of different attachments to it. Like, like you would have to buy like a box full of just different attachments to attach to different makes of vehicles. Uh, and it, it just, and different software to, to communicate with those vehicles. It was like this hodgepodge of stuff that, that the independent shop had to deal with at that time. And they were scrambling to keep up. And also tool manufacturers were doing the same thing because you know, the dealership, they would manufacture their own proprietary tools and they didn't have to worry about it. However, the independents, they had to scramble to keep up. So 
this this created basically the atmosphere that OBD2 was born from. And OBD2 was the quote unquote standardized system that came about as a result of all this proprietary software and connectivity and all this stuff. So then we have OBD2, which comes in in 1996 and says, okay, the interface has to look like this and it has to communicate using this language. And these are the systems that need to be available and blah, 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 blah. Well, that all worked fine and good. Then ABS systems came along. Well, manufacturers weren't, manufacturers weren't under any kind of mandate that said that they had to make an ABS system that communicated with X tool, they could go back to their proprietary ways. Same thing with SRS systems. And now with telematics. So say for instance, you buy one of these vehicles and it gets out of warranty and one of these systems fails. Now the dealership may be the only place that you can get this service and this cuts the independence out a little bit more. And this is the trend that, that, that I'd like to, to bring about here and bring about in this discussion is that you know, technology is gonna, gonna continue and it's gonna continue to be incorporated into vehicles and we're gonna get all kinds of great, neat things that come along with that. However, on the repair side of things, I think it creates a whole different challenge and I think particularly with the independent shops, we may be scrambling to try to keep up with all this. But here we are in a place to where the new systems that are coming out, these new technologies that are coming out and incorporated into these vehicles are sort of marginalizing us. And, and things are going back to, to the dealer. So my question to you is this, one, what do you see happening uh, with telematics in the future? What kinds of things do you envision uh, to come about? And how do you, as like say an independent shop or just as a repair person outside of a dealership, how do you see dealing with these systems as time goes on? I mean, do you change your business model to just sort of like leave that out instead of like sending them back to the dealer? Because as, as I was trying to say earlier, you know, someone would, a good customer would bring you this car, it had like an SRS code, but you had no way to find out what the code was or how to fix it or anything like that. It was all proprietary stuff that had to go back to the dealer. So you finish up your service work and your tires or whatever, and then you send them back to the dealer. Well, this, this makes it difficult for the customer too because there is no one-stop shop other than the dealer. So the manufacturers are almost holding their customers hostage. And, and I think have been trying for years to try to make it so that they could keep hold on that service, how they could, how they could keep a hold on their customers and, and retain them as much as possible because the more they get you walking through the door, uh, the more they keep you loyal to the brand and also they might walk you through the showroom on the way to the service department and you say to yourself, hey, that's a really nice one there, can I afford it? The next thing you know, a salesman's sitting you down and trying to figure out the numbers. That's what the manufacturer wants. So how do you as independent repair personnel people and, and shops intend to deal with this, this issue that seems to be something that's, that's growing rapidly in the industry. I mean, I think by the time we get to our, our 2011, 2012 vehicles, when they get out of warranty in the next five, seven years, or 10 years, depending upon what kind of vehicle you have, what, what will we be facing at those times? I mean, it's, it's interesting enough, you know, with hybrid, hybrid technologies and everything else, I mean, it's, it's left the independence a lot of, a lot of work and, and a huge investment trying to keep up with that, that dealer juggernaut, that manufacturer juggernaut that's out there that's basically trying to marginalize us and shove us out of the industry. Anyway, I look forward to your thoughts on this. I'm sure that, you know, this will be a continuing discussion. So this just may be the first uh, of the videos on this topic, but we'll see where it goes. But I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are. Anyway, I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at ericthecarguy.com where if you have automotive questions, I suggest you start by typing in a couple of keywords into the search function over at my website. A lot of stuff in the database, just might get an answer from that. And if you can't get one there, sign up for the forum, it's free. And we'll see what we can do to help you over there. Aside from that, uh, you can find me at Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. And I close with be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. I'll see you later.